from somewhere in Hollywood. It's the, 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 the Tom Likas Show. How is this possible, man? And now, and now, here he is, Tom Likas. Thank you for tuning in to the Tom Likas Show. This is where America gets together to talk about the issues you really care about. It's a different kind of a radio talk program. We're the radio talk show that is not hosted by a right-wing wacko or a convicted felon. No! I am your host. I got our telephone number. You're going to need it. It's 1-800-5800-TOP. 1-800-5800-866. Thank you for tuning in. Thanks for being part of our program. Here we are together again on the radio. Look at this story. This one's been uh, coming like a freight train here in Southern California. Southern California is not the only place that has this phenomenon. I know in Texas it does exist, and I know it exists in a bunch of places. It exists anywhere you've got Mexicans. This particular version of the story comes, I'm sure you were all reading the Christian Science Monitor. Yes, sure you are. Is that still in business? <laughs> oh yes, I read the Christian Science Monitor. I never miss an issue. This is from the Christian Science Monitor. Dateline Los Angeles. Swarmed around Leo's Taco Truck on Eagle Rock Boulevard. About fifty night patrons are stuffing their cheeks with carne asada taco. Sounds good right about now. And chewing over one of the city's big controversies. Taco trucks. Why should a taco vendor be able to park in front of someone else's restaurant and steal his customers away with cheaper food, asks one man, sparing pinto beans on a paper plate with a plastic fork. But making the move every hour is a bad idea, says another, as he orders a veggie burrito. How can a truck vendor keep loyal customers if he has to move so often? These patrons, like many Angelinos, are, this is the Christian Science Monitor saying, they're as hot as salsa caliente over new rules that go into effect Thursday. What to do with the 14,000 roving restaurateurs who have brought inexpensive entrees, a sense of community, intensifying competition for diners, neighborhood complaints, and a political brouhaha. Yeah, that's Christian Science Monitor. To the street corners of Los Angeles County. The new county law makes parking a taco truck in one spot for more than an hour, punishable by a fine of up to $1,000 or six months in jail, or both. Is that just taco trucks? What about ice cream trucks? Just curious. How about those guys who sell produce out of the back of a truck? Are they allowed to uh, park more than an hour? Why, why, Why them and not taco trucks? Oh, no. Says here it replaces a long time but rarely enforced measure that fine trucks sixty dollars if they stayed in one spot longer than thirty minutes. The law affects unincorporated areas of the city, where about sixty percent of the population lives, and includes East LA, one of the biggest concentrations of Mexican Americans in the United States. The five county supervisors passed the new regulations unanimously a month ago, saying the volume of complaints had reached critical mass in recent years. 
With less expensive menu items and lower overhead, the mobile kitchens were forcing established restaurants to close early and suffer losses, according to the East Los Angeles Chamber of Commerce and other business groups. Bricks and mortar restaurants charged that taco trucks were too often parking directly in front of their establishments and siphoning off customers. How does this law solve that problem? You can park in front of a restaurant and siphon off customers, but only for one hour. And then when are you allowed to circle back around? Seriously. Uh, did, all right, you're there for an hour and then you leave. Do you come back in, what, 10 minutes and you'll be legal? You have to wonder. Says here, growing pressures within the Los Angeles economy, including the soaring prices of gasoline and food and slumping employment, have exacerbated the tension between stationary merchants who have leases to pay, employ many more workers than the mobile vendors, and who dearly need their patrons and parking. Maria Cerdas, a deputy for Supervisor Yvonne B. Burke, the B is for Brathwaite, uh, she says, uh, we've gotten so much negativity from the business community, complaining about how much these trucks take away in business, that we felt we had to listen and do something. She says, more and more trucks have ventured further into residential neighborhoods where homeowners complain of loud gatherings and music until 2 or 3 a.m. But that's a whole other problem. That's a whole other issue. Says here, the new law is generating a backlash, calling themselves the Taco Resistance. Some 150 of the city's 14,000 licensed vendors have stated that they will refuse to comply with the law starting this Thursday. They've hired a lawyer, Philip Greenwald. Do you ever work on a roach, don't you? I don't think so. A veteran of, just a guess, a veteran of 40 years of representing mobile industrial caterers. He says these trucks pay taxes. They were inspected by the health department, and there is no legitimate reason to be pushing them around. This is not a matter of unfair competition, but restraint of fair trade. Others worry that one of the city's most distinctive social and cultural features could fall by the wayside. Thousands of Angelinos have long gathered at the trucks, in many cases since childhood, for quick carnitas burritos or mouth-watering carnitas, fired meat and other gut Busting goodness, says a recent editorial in the Los Angeles Times. Call them what you will, roach coaches, loncheras, uh, snack vans, but taco trucks are a rich part of our region's heritage. The Times and a leading political columnist in California, Dan Walters of the Sacramento Bee, have called for the county supervisors to rescind the law as unfair to those at the lower end of the economic ladder. On Wednesday, that being today... A grassroots campaign called SaveOurTacoTrucks.org, dot organ meat, uh, which has gathered thousands of signatures to petition a change in the law, is sponsoring Taco Libre, the chance to enjoy a last mobile entree before the new law takes effect. The whole taco truck culture in L.A. fills a void left by traditional restaurants, says Aaron Soderleiter whose website trumpets the rallying cry, carne asada is not a crime. He says the lower price of truck vendored food, uh, 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 tacos for a buck, giant burritos for two fifty, longer hours of operation at the outdoor venues create oases, that's the plural of oasis, of, yes, of neighborhood camaraderie, social interaction and safety that are sorely needed in a city dominated by car travel, gang crime, and little pedestrianism and public transportation. And his web partner, is that his web life partner? I don't know. Chris Rutherford. This is more about, this is about more than delicious and inexpensive food. It's about people and community and neighborhoods. Um, my opinion about this is simple. First of all, uh, there's two issues here, and I have an opinion about each. 
Going into residential neighborhoods 2 to 3 a.m., that's unreasonable, and it should be stopped. Just like the film crews who are filming until 2 or 3 a.m. need to be stopped in Los Angeles as well. But uh, if you're going to let film crews operate until 2 to 3 a.m., then you got to let uh, the Mexican version of craft services operate as well. I say they should all be stopped from doing business in residential neighborhoods uh, after 11 p.m. That's it. Done. That's it. Residential neighborhoods go back to being residential neighborhoods at 11 p.m. And it should be for everybody, and it should be fairly uh, uh, worked out across the board. There's no business being done in the street after 11 p.m. No film shoots, no roach coaches, nothing. Not in residential neighborhoods. But as far as in business districts, you know, this is a society built on free enterprise and competition. And uh, you know what? Everybody who has a, a restaurant that is built on real estate, that is standing in a bricks-and-mortar building, all of those people have the option of putting wheels on it and taking it out to the streets. They have the option of doing it. They chose uh, to be uh, 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 bricks-and-mortar businesses. That's what they chose. This is not unfair. There's no such thing as unfair competition when we're talking about, uh, when we're talking about taco trucks. Uh, versus uh, restaurants that decided they don't want to drive around all day looking for customers. They want to stay in one place. Anybody should be able to sell anything, anytime, anywhere if it's legal. It's that simple. I mean, uh, I don't understand uh, what the big deal is. I think that taco trucks should be able to operate freely in commercial areas anytime, day or night. That's it. They should uh, be inspected by the health department. They should pay their taxes. But uh, they indeed are a tradition in Los Angeles. They're a tradition in Mexico. And uh, they're something that we're all used to seeing. And uh, I have patronized uh, these trucks myself uh, on my own street uh, when uh, there is construction going on during the day. And the taco truck shows up about 1130 and everybody comes down from the construction sites for lunch. And I have joined them in line, in fact... Uh, the people who operate the truck don't even look up. They speak Spanish to me because they assume I'm another one of the construction workers and that I am not, uh, you know, one of the residents on the street. But uh, you know what? I have enjoyed the food from taco trucks, and I support the little guy. Bottom line. So we've got these taco trucks. They're operating all over L.A. They've been here for decades. And now the uh, the business community has... As, with the, as if as if taco trucks not part of the business community, the business community that has clout has decided to try to put out of business or to to hinder the business operations of the part of the business community that doesn't have clout. Where do you stand on these goddamn trucks? For God's sake! One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. One eight hundred five eight hundred eight six six. Screw these women that want to take away what we have. You know. Screw them, Tom. That's right. Screw them. For God's sake, screw them. It's the Tom Likas Show. It's the Tom Likas Show. I'm 1-800-5-800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Thank you so much for tuning in. And uh, before we continue our conversation about uh, roach coaches, taco trucks, uh, let's go now to Bill O'Reilly and find out what's coming up, Bill. Okay, I don't know. Uh, whatever it is, it's not right on the teleprompter. I don't know what that is. I've never seen that. No, there is. We are going to do Sting, yeah. Okay, but... Okay. Now, I can't read it. There's no there's no words on it. Okay. Ready? Sure. There's okay. no words there to play us out. What does that mean, to play us out? It's, it's Sting is going to do, it's a video, Sting video. Okay. What is... For credits. I don't know what that means, to play us out. What does that mean? To end the show? Yeah, yeah. All right, go, go. In five, four, three... That's tomorrow, and that is it. Okay. In five, four, three. That's tomorrow, and that is it for us today. And we will leave you with a... I can't do it. Okay. Well,
We'll do it live. Okay. We'll, no. we'll do it live. F it. Do it live. I can. I'll write it and we'll do it live. And thing sucks. In five, four, three. That's tomorrow, and that is it for us today. I'm Bill O'Reilly. Thanks again for watching. We'll leave you with Sting and a cut off his new album. Take it away. Oh, boy. <laughs> I guess we came out at the wrong time on Bill. Anyway, let's check in on what's coming up on tonight's 11 o'clock news. At 11, pay more at the grocer, but getting less will tell you how to get the most. The f*** are you doing? <laughs> Jeez, it's like an epidemic. The hell is going on? How much do they pay these people? Unbelievable. All right, we will get to your calls at one eight hundred five eight hundred. Tom, let's check in now with Fox News. Fox News Radio. I'm Bill Vitka. I'm Bill Vitka, and uh, just a second. I apologize for this, but. I'm just a little, uh, I, I really apologize for this, as a matter of fact. There actually is a, a newscast here, uh, but... Uh, Jeez. How much do they pay these people? Because I'll tell you what, whatever they're getting, I deserve a lot more. You don't hear me doing that. Tell you what... 1-800-5-800-TOM is our telephone number. All right. We'll get back to Bill O'Reilly here in just a second. But uh, in the meantime, uh, let's say hello here to... Uh, hmm. Let's start here with John on the Tom Likas show. Hi, Tom. How are you? I'm okay. Okay. Funny stuff, by the way. I appreciate that. Okay. Here's my only complaint there. I'm actually in the production end of the film industry. So <clears throat> my only complaint against... The Rose coaches, the film industry has to pay everybody, everybody from the, the front yard, using their front yard to where they park their cars, is compensated. And you being in the... I didn't get a... I, by the way, I've had 12 film shoots across the street from my house since November. I've never gotten one penny. So what you're saying is false. I imagine if people tried to blackmail you into paying them, that you might pay them. But that's certainly not automatic. Well, someone from the production company is supposed to knock on doors, leave notices and so on, and offer you something. No, they, they are not required to offer you anything, and they generally don't. Well, that's bad business. Larger production companies always go around door to door and say, hey, do you mind if we have chairs in your front Well, yard? I don't know if these were large production companies, but right across the street from my home, I saw Eva Longoria, Ashton Kutcher, and H. Nobody offered me one penny. Wow, now see that, that's wrong, and I'll agree with you on that part, but the film industry does bring a lot of, of uh, revenue and dollars where the taco truck guy doesn't bring anything. Uh, well, first of all, t taco trucks do pay taxes, that's number one. Uh, number two, the people who work on that truck, they are making money, and they are spending it in this economy. And number three, the film crews are arrogant and way more difficult to deal with than the average person on a taco truck. I have dealt with the film crews personally, and they are mean and miserable and arrogant. And they treat people's streets like this is a, a movie lot or something. Uh, I would much I have, I'll tell you what, if I had to choose at midnight, I'd rather have a taco truck than a film crew. Unfortunately, even being in that industry, I'll agree with you. The problem is, is, is what a lot of people don't understand is uh, we usually work about 16 to 18-hour days, uh, and, and you're right. Everything is always behind schedule, and that's I not do my problem. That's not my problem. Hey, oh, absolutely. Now, film crews treat the residents like crap. The, the issue There's a reason the why industry. Angelinos hate you. That's true, but in your situation, the, once the city issues the permit because they want those big dollars from the film. I know why the city does it, but right. uh, I don't have to agree with what the city is doing. And I would say if the film crews are going to be out there, then there's no reason the taco truck shouldn't be. You have you have a point, and like always, I do I do agree with you. I think uh, I think there is more revenue generated from film crews and and. But, oh, but that, that's not how things are decided. We have big businesses, we have small businesses. So what you're saying is, if a business isn't big, it should not have the same advantages of a big business. Um, not necessarily. Everybody should have fair opportunity, but in, in the productions that I work on, usually the people in, in 
most cases, everybody is compensated for the inconvenience. And in your case, it absolutely would have... But, but if people case. object to the filming, they have no recourse whatsoever. That Well, the only recourse with that would be is contact city, city officials, and they... they yeah. By the way, these trucks have permits also, and they do have to go through inspections. That's correct. So trust That's me correct. when I tell you, the taco trucks, uh, they, they also pay taxes. They also generate revenue. They also have licenses. Well, from a homeowner standpoint, in your case, I have to agree with you in this aspect. From working in that industry and being at your studio that you don't uh, are able to mention anymore many times uh you you know you realize the amount of jobs that we do provide for people and the amount of jobs that are out there and the amount well, of Well, I I must there. say I I must say that's also that's also false in that uh, uh, the entertainment industry is but an infinitesimal part uh, of of the overall business community in Southern California. It is not the biggest business here. It is not the overwhelmingly largest business here. It does not generate the most revenue here. Aerospace does that. That's correct. So th this idea that if we don't tolerate film crews outside our front door till 3 a.m. with craft services and all the crap they leave out there all the time, lights and noise and gunfire, whatever else they provide to a neighborhood late at night, and if we don't all tolerate that, that we're killing the economy here, it's a lie. It's a big lie. Well, the, the only promise I can make you is if I'm ever across the street from your house, I'll be happy to compensate you. I don't want compensation. I want you to stay away from my house. Well, it is a nice neighborhood, you have to admit. And and I think that's big. It's a nice to... neighborhood, and it was a nicer neighborhood before people started using their houses as businesses. That's correct. People are paid very well when they use their houses as a film shoot. You know that. That's correct. Yeah. Well, well anyway, I really appreciate your time, and it's been a lot of fun. Thanks. Sure you do. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Let's say hello here to Tom on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, Tom. How you doing? I'm doing okay. Extremely, extremely long time. First time. Yeah. I listened to you for a long time, even when um, you left and came back. So, but anyway, it's a pleasure to talk to you. Anyway, I live in East L.A. I've lived here all my life so far. And, um, you know, the trucks that they talk about, on streets that, uh, you know, don't have any uh, restaurants in front of them. Uh, from my observations that I've seen, uh, most of the trucks are on Olympic and between Eastern and Atlantic. And uh, probably the ones that are complaining the most are the two big uh, King Tacos that are here in East L.A. Got one over here on 3rd and 4th and one over there on uh, uh, Olympic and uh, Downey Road. And, you know, these people are just trying to make a living like everybody else, you know. They should just leave them alone. Uh, most of the restaurants and stuff in East L.A. are closed early. Um, you know, they should just leave them alone. They're providing, you know, food for people that, you know, go out and stay out late. They know where they can go because they've already established places, you know, where they're at, you know, these vendors. And, you know, they just go and they eat. You know, a lot of people out there to get out of bars, they come and eat, which is a really a good idea, you know, to eat something to soak up some of that alcohol. So, you know. I, I support the uh, trucks. I don't support them being in residential neighborhoods at 1 or 2 a.m. That I don't support. Uh, but I do support their right uh, to be out there uh, anywhere in an area there where there are stores and other retail businesses. Why not? Yeah. I mean, they're not really, from what I observed, I mean, they're, they're not in residential neighborhoods. And, and if any of the local businesses, if, if any of the local businesses don't like it, uh, they have every right to put their business on a truck like anybody else if that's what they want to do. Well, if they think putting really if if they think putting the four the wheels on a restaurant would help it, then then do go do that. Yeah. Well, you know, the ones that I object to are the ones that use shopping carts and you know line it with uh, tin foil and then put a like a cookie sheet on top. And yeah, then but we're not talking about those. We're talking about no. licensed vehicles, permitted to. vehicles, vehicles that are, have health inspections. They pay taxes. That's what we're talking about here. Exactly. I mean, I have no problem with them being out there. Because, uh, you know, a lot of, like I say, a lot of the restaurants in East L.A. close early. So, you right. know, there's other places where people can meet and, you know, they have they eat food. They have their tacos and burritos and whatever else they have. So that's not a problem to me. Sounds good to me. All right, I'm going to move on, Tom. Thank you. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. Alfonso on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Yeah, Tom, in the last caller, he just mentioned King Taco, which is one of the greatest success stories in fast food in, you know, the L.A. area. And King Taco 
he started off with a, a roach coach selling tacos, and he's gone on to uh, bigger and better things. And most of these taco truck owners, yes, they do have to pay for permits. They do have inspections. And not only not that, their fuel costs nowadays. I mean, if one of those trucks get like seven miles to the gallon, I would be surprised. So he's got that cost involved in it. Then also what they do is they get permission from, like, say, a guy who has a gas station and he closes up early. Well, he wants to supplement his cum, so what he'll do is he'll lease, like, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday to the taco truck owner, you know, with the conditions being just make sure the area is cleaned up. He doesn't want to see tin foil and paper and cups laying around on his business when he comes in the next day. And most of them abide by that agreement. And some of these taco trucks, Tom, Oh, my goodness, the salsas, they're delicious. Oh, yeah. I mean, and they give you those little lime wedges and, you know, the little, what do you call the the little chilies, and you squeeze the, the lime on the, the, the meat that's just been cooked on the on the fire spit. I mean, Oh, the, I believe me, I've, I've eaten at the Roach Coach many times, yeah, they, many times. And they, they sell those, like, Mexican sodas that just complement them so good, you know. You know, you got my mouth watering with this subject, Tom. I'm going to run up to a taco truck right now. <laughs> okay. Well, I'm a big supporter. Let them know. Okay. Hey, carne asada is not a crime. That's right. Take it easy, Tom. Bye, right, you too. one 800 5800 tom That's our telephone number. Fernando on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hello. All right. Let's say hello to Gil on the Tom Likas Show. Lycus 101, class of 2008, representing. Yes, sir. Yeah, close that, Professor. So far, so good. Good, sir. Good, sir. So I, was, I, I agree with the last two callers, and everything that they brought up is exactly true. And it's funny because since I'm in Pasadena, they just opened up a King Taco, and it's one of the hot spots to go to. I mean, you know, you find kids, a lot of white bread America going down to pick it up. But, but like, like, like I agree with one of the guys is that if you're drunk, off your butt and you want to you get something to eat there's not a lot of places that are open you're not going to stop into a 7-eleven and get a slurpee or get some some whatever taco they have man you're going to stop and support you know rasa you're going to support family business owned um places but i do agree with you about those that are in like residence and whatnot it's just ridiculous why do you got to do that you know, it, well, it, certainly late at night. That they, you know what? That's pushing it. Uh, the problem you have is that when people abuse this privilege of being out there, uh, it it then it allows the morons who want to make laws against them uh, right. to come in and do this. Uh, people should uh, be reasonable and say, you know what? We're going to have a cutoff time. We're not going into neighborhoods now. Certainly during the day in right. my neighborhood, there's plenty of construction going on. Right. Lots of guys and, uh, will not be able to drive down from the Hollywood Hills down to Sunset Boulevard to look for a place to eat. Uh, Of course there should be a taco truck there. And as I said, many times I've gone out there at 1130 myself and had lunch. Oh, yeah, and it's great. And like you said, it's all, they, they have license. It's all, they take care of it as much as they can. They clean it up, and, and it's good, authentic Mexican food, man. I mean, you know, it, you can't go wrong. And with with the prices they give you, it's better than going to McDonald's and get an extra fat around you or whatever, you know. I mean, it's ridiculous. But what's great about, like like you said, you, it comes to you. It comes to you, and you don't even have to drive your car to wherever and sit and drive through and whatever. Right. Hey, Tom, take me out Mexican style. All right, Gil, here you go. Tom Likas. 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. Tom, you are a god. You are my higher power, my friend. It's the Tom Likas Show. It's the Tom Likas Show at 1-800-5800-TOM. And here's what's coming up uh, with Bill O'Reilly. Okay, I don't know. uh, Whatever it is, it's not right on the teleprompter. I don't know what that is. I've never seen that. No, there it is. We are going to do Sting, yeah. Okay, but now I can't read it. There's There's no words on it. Okay. 
Sure. There's no words there to play us out. What does that mean, to play us out? It's, it's Sting is going to do, it's a video, Sting video. Okay. What is For credits. I don't know what that means, to play us out. What does that mean? To end the show? Yeah, yeah. All right, go, go. In five, four, three. That's tomorrow, and that is it. Okay. In five, four, three. That's tomorrow, and that is it for us today. And we will leave you with a... Uh, I can't do it. Okay. We'll do it live. Okay. Well, no. we'll do it live! F*** it! Do it live! I can, I'll write it, and we'll do it live! F***ing thing sucks! In five, four, three... That's tomorrow, and that is it for us today. I'm Bill O'Reilly. Thanks again for watching. We'll leave you with Sting and a cut off his new album. Take it away. Jeez. We need to get that teleprompter fixed. Get that teleprompter fixed? Let's get on that. Jeez. It's kind of unnerving. And you want. Sounds a little wild. It does sound wild. I think he just had uh he just has, has back scrub a little falafel there, I think. One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom, that's our telephone number. Uh we're talking <laughs> We're talking about uh <laughs> But, oh, yes, I'm sorry. I forgot all about the news. Let's go down to Bill Vitka in the Fox News room. Fox News Radio, I'm Bill Vitka. I'm Bill Vitka, and uh, just a second, I apologize for this, but I'm just a little, uh, I, I really apologize for this, as a matter of fact. There actually is a, a newscast here, uh, but... Uh, One eight hundred five eight hundred. Tom is our telephone number. We'll get back to Bill Vitka once he gets his act together. Uh, this is Gil on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hey Tom, a uh, long time, first time. Uh, Gil from Santa Ana here. Another Gil. Yes, Gil. Hey, uh, I, I had a, I had a comment. Uh, you know, I, I don't know what what these people they're saying that a lot of times you know the taco trucks they take they're taking business away. They're not giving back to the community, or whether they're not paying enough taxes and stuff. I grew up here in Santa Ana my whole life, and growing up, I mean, it's always been a part of not only family, but friends, but even the neighborhood. Where I grew up, there's a place, there's a taco place now called Taco de Anda, and the guy did start, he started with the Roach Coach, just like, I guess, uh, a lot of these other uh, uh, big, uh, you know, corporate taco places uh, do, and what he did, he went ahead and kept his road coaches. They still, they're still out in Santa Ana. They still, you know, they still go to different places. But what this guy did, he went ahead and tore down, bought off a, a pool hall that was where he was parked originally, and built it. He built a, a hall where people could have the quinceañeras and parties, or you know, all, all their festivities. And he and he rents it out. I'm talking cheap. Not like the Labor's Hall, not like uh, all these other big, fancy uh, places. Uh, basically, I mean, to help out. Right, and it's uh, uh, not a big business, and I imagine the profit uh, margin is slim. But, it, but it's part it's part of the local culture. It's part of uh, the tradition. In Southern California, it certainly is. Well, not only is it tradition, and I mean, I'm, I'm here in front of a taco place, taco stand right now. Me da este tres de birria, por favor. I'm going to eat some tacos right now, Tom. I'm going to eat a couple for you. <laughs> Thank you. I, You know what? I'm on the air. I would love to be there with you having some. Tell you what. Con todo, por favor. Say that again. I'd love to be there having some with you right now. I'm starving. <laughs> no, well, uh, tell me what kind you would eat, man, and I'll eat them for oh, you. Oh, carne asada, baby. Hot as it as hot as it comes. <laughs> but yeah, Tom. I mean, I'm telling you. I mean, what's with this? I mean, the little guy. Everybody, they're always down on the little guy. Why the little guy, Tom? <laughs> well, that's exactly right. And a lot of the bigger guys, uh, they do all kinds of business out there on the street. Uh, whether it be. 
Oh, he's going to yeah, eat these are, in my I mean, name, too. Yeah. Uh, you know, th this idea that uh, the only people who should be able to, uh, to to do business are the big businesses and not the small businesses, this, it, to me, it's just outrageous. It, it is, Tom. It is. I mean, and look, they, they work hard. I mean, they bust their asses. They're here. I mean, there's no air conditioning, most of them. And, and you know what? Not only that, they always, I mean, you could come up and order 20 tacos and pay at the end. Where else do I mean? I know that restaurants do that, but I mean, I walk off sometimes and then you know forget to pay and then come back the next day and say, "Hey, man, you know I, I forgot to pay. You know, here's the money yeah. for, for for the other day." Sometimes they won't even take them and they ah, well, that's okay. Yeah, I but, mean, come on, Tom. Oh, I know, Gil. I know, I know. And uh, what would LA be uh, without a taco truck? What would it be? Uh, it just wouldn't be the same, man. Same as Santa Ana, one of the meccas for taco trucks. I don't think, you know, L.A. would be the same or, or even San Diego for that. I mean, I don't think any place that, that's ever had a taco taco uh, uh, trucks would ever be the same. Keep in I mean, mind, though, that it's yeah. it's it's L.A. County that's uh, going after Yeah, I know, trucks. I know. I know. And, and I worked out there, and I know, because I work for a company. I mean, it's a supermarket, and I work graveyard. So if I'm out there... I mean, the only the only places that are open are the taco trucks. So I need to know where these taco trucks are at. I mean, that's the first thing I do when I go to a different store. I investigate where's the taco, or I ask the janitors who would know. That's right. They would know because they go out and they let you get that you know early in the morning. This is their version of craft services. And definitely, definitely. Well, Tom, uh, uh, my food's ready. I'm eating your tacos first. <laughs> Thought I'd throw my my uh, two cents in. And let you know that, hey, you know, we, we just got to support, you know, the little guys. And, uh, That's right. Hopefully, you know, they'll it, it'll work out for all of them. I hope so, Gil. Hey, uh, take me out African style. My, my kid right now wants it. African tribal style. Here you go. One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. That's our telephone number here. Alexandra on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Uh, hi, Tom. I'm calling. I work across the street from MacArthur Park in a university building. It's like an extension building. And tomorrow, there's actually going to be more than a hundred taco truck owners or people who work in taco trucks organizing there um, and talking about what's going on and seeing how they can combat this. And it's crazy. This is a problem that has been going on for years. Um, I've already worked there three years, and the taco truck that's right across the street, he's been there for more than 20 years. He's established. Everybody knows him. Everybody loves him. And we have literally had to fight the police off of him, like, even before this ordinance or whatever it is they're doing, um, before they wanted to pass it. Like, they would come and fight him, give him all these signs, even though he had everything in order, even though, you know, everything's inspected and in order. And it's just so sad to see that they that they were doing this to him, even though he's really, he's not harming anybody. He's feeding the community. He's giving people the opportunity to have like a cheap lunch, a delicious lunch. And it's just crazy. This problem is, it's just crazy. What would LA be without the taco trucks? But I'm excited um, to see all these taco trucks tomorrow. We were joking around and saying we're going to have them give us samples and see which one's the best one. Because I like that. Yeah, it's crazy, um, but we're doing everything we can to help them, and like I said, I don't know what L.A. would be without the taco trucks. It's just, and it's a problem that's been going on for, for quite some time, and it's spearheaded by Gloria Molina, who I'm sure she has had more than her share of tacos. Yeah, take a look at her. Considering how she does the fact that she's, you know, come on, I don't understand why she would want to do this. I don't understand why she would want to get rid of these taco trucks that are part of our culture and just part of the L.A. way of living. After the club, after the bars, everyone goes and tries to sober up with some tacos. Come on, like, how are you going to take that away from us? I totally agree. Good luck to the taco truck owners tomorrow as they try to protest this outrage. Our email address, tom at blowmeuptom.com. The Tom Likas Show.